Okay. Good evening. You all are welcome to Bhavana. So we are ready to start our retreat. Introduction to meditation. The name of the retreat explain the main goal of this retreat. Introduction to meditation. So I hope someone who are here might have some experience for meditation. Do you? Is someone brand new to this place? Or someone might have some experience with different teachers and different place? But anyway, this retreat basically for the beginners. Uh, who have experience, it doesn't matter. You can use that experience. And you can take more information when we start to discuss about the um, meditation and the techniques, as well as uh, when we start to discuss about the matters that arise through your practice. So during that time, participate in all these things, you can uh, take more information as well as if there is some any questions or any matters regarding your practice, you can use that opportunity. And beginners, uh, they, they can start having some um, information, collecting some information in here during this retreat. Very important thing is to practice energy and effort. These two things are the important thing. You have that energy and effort, that's why you are here. You all have a goal, because I want to practice, I want to start. Generally people say, I want to practice mindfulness. That is the main purpose of practicing meditation. I don't know whether it is Connecting with that uh, you mean mindfulness or not, but we'll see. So during this written time, you're going to have uh, four Dhamma talks. Every day morning at 9 a.m., you can join with Bhante G. He will give two Dhamma talks. And in the evening, there will be another Dhamma talk by me as well as we have opportunity Q&A session. And uh, there's opportunity for the interviews. You can sign up for the interviews. Me and Bhante G ready to sit with you. Uh, personal interviews regarding practice meditation. And if there is uh, anything regarding the Dharma knowledge or something like that. So all these things are the main thing that you can take opportunity to develop your meditation experiences, Dhamma knowledge. So during this written time, after this uh, session, you have to observe silence. There's a word for that, noble silence. I don't know whether you are able to practice noble silence, but my suggestion is for you to be silent. Noble silence is kind of very <clears throat> deep thing. Uh, it is directly related to the person who attained enlightenment or who are enjoying with jhana. So perhaps some might be here who are experiencing those kind of things. They can observe noble silence, others can be just observe silence, just silence. Uh, the reason is observing silence, we are taking opportunity to turn into our, ourself. We looking things outside, we are searching things outside. Uh, we are blaming to others, not ourselves. Our mind naturally go to see some faults of others, not other, not ourselves. 
So therefore, silence would be very supportive thing for you to think about yourself. Open mind to earth to yourself and try to see your mind. What is happening in your mind? What kind of thoughts are arising in your mind? What kind of thoughts are powerful there? All these things you can see turn into yourself. Then, without depending outside things, we can create something ourselves. That is, made of this silence. So, traditionally, we start our retreat with the precepts because meditation is not something happening itself. To get the real results with meditation, you need discipline. Silence is one discipline. And generally we gather together. We ready to discuss so many things without having a topic. There's no particular topic when we gather together to start some kind of conversation. The words are limited, the concepts are limited, that's the nature of our mind. So in here, we're going to make boundaries and limits. We are not here to spend time with blah, 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 blah. We are here to see things through our mind. We are here to open our mind, to recognize our mind, what is happening. If there is any kind of matters that burden you, you can find the reason. What is the reason? Why this fire set up myself? Why? What is the reasons of this fire? You can see everything when you start to open your mind. So, to get a support for this practice, we traditionally observe precepts. Don't think observing precepts, you are becoming a Buddhist. No way. Observing precepts, you are not becoming Buddhist. For example, around the world, each and every civil society is not allowed to kill. Then, if it is happening according to that rules, law and order, everybody should be Buddhist. You're not supposed to stay. So then, everybody is supposed to be Buddhist. So therefore, these are basic uh, uh, guidance for our life. Precepts are guidelines to make boundaries, to control, to tame our word and actions. For what? To be calm, to be calm. We all are willing to be calm ourselves. We all are looking happiness. We all are wasting time to increase our happiness. So you all are here to be happy. So therefore, really, if you want to experience that happiness and if you want to develop that happiness, you have to open your mind to earth to yourself, to open your mind. The first step is you have to tame your word and actions. Discipline is very important. So we observe precepts to increase our discipline. And maintain that discipline. There's a wonderful support from that behavior to control our defilements. Because right away you can see your defilements arising in your mind. Right away you can pay attention to control that defilements. Because your mind is very clear your mind getting calm and calm. So seeing the nature of your mind, paying attention to control your unwholesome stages, so you can drive it to right directions. So that is the meaning of observances. So we start with these observances, then we have sila, we call it sila. Pali word is for that, sila. 
See the main moral or discipline. To tame your word and actions. Why we want to tame? Who can tame word and actions? Only the human beings. Human beings always have limits for everything. Human beings always have boundaries for everything. So being born as a human being, we have duty, responsibility to develop our humanity, human quality. So observing precepts, there's opportunity for us to develop our human nature, human quality, for what to calm, to become a calmful person, to live happily, peacefully. When you become a calmful person, you can control your unwholesome deeds. You can control your behavior. Controlling your behavior, controlling your unwholesome thoughts, you can live happily, peacefully, as well as you can share that peace with others. So this is the main purpose of these precepts. We don't have other rules, regulations for this retreat. These are the rules, regulations, and requirements for this retreat. There are eight rules, precepts are here. These are volunteer. Volunteer things means you have to determine yourself not to engage with any of these things that mentioned in these precepts. Because, not because of the rules of Bhavana society. Understanding yourself as human being, what are the responsibilities in my life? Understanding the benefits of these rules applying in our daily life. You have to observe these things. Otherwise, not, not just as a blind thing. Not just listening to me, or oh, I'm going to observe because uh, the monk said, what they said to observe, that's not. I'm not asking, I'm just guiding to you. Everything up to you. If you want to really see the results of your practice, if you really wanted to calm down your mind, if you really want to find the solutions for your life matters, so these are the activities that we can apply to our daily life. So you can think about deeply, you can analyze it even today before go to bed. You can analyze and analyze, and you can see the results of these observances. First thing, first thing, not to kill any living beings. To understand this, you don't want to pay attention outside. Think about this: if someone coming to hurt you, if someone disturbing you. Do you like it? Do you like it? You don't like it. If someone disturbing or if someone uh, making some troubles for you, you don't like it. The, the, the maximum thing that someone can do for us, kill it. So you don't like it then. You don't like it. So then, turn it to yourself. The things that I don't like, I want to apply for anyone else. I don't like disturbing. If someone tries to disturb me, I don't like it. If someone hurt me, I don't like it. If, if someone tries to kill me, I don't like it. So same as turning to yourself, we have to be ready to use that opportunity to think about ourselves. Oh, others also like me, they don't like it. So then, I don't want to do it. You are promising, you are making that promise yourself. Abstaining from killing. Abstaining from stealing. Things that belong to you. You like to keep it too. You like to use all these things as you are busy. You go into your visas, you like to use all these things. So therefore, we are not supposed to disturb any others regarding their 
materials, things that belongs to them. We are not supposed to use those things without their permission. We are not supposed to take any of these things that belongs to them without their permission. So, abstaining from stealing. You ready to make a promise to yourself? Okay, I'm not going to touch anything that belongs to you. You are making that promise. Not to me, not to the Buddha. You are making that promise yourself, developing your determination, developing your determination, so not to steal. And particularly in these days, you are ready to practice celibacy during this time, in this retreat. To save your time and space, and during that time period, you can reduce your worries. Particularly, you can control your desire. So that's why you are promising to, you are determined to yourself to practice legacy. Not to lie. To develop, you have to practice. We have to live without lying. If someone lies, that person doesn't have any confidence. That, that person is not able to develop his confidence himself. Others not ready to accept him, no. Others not ready to believe him. Others also does not have any confidence to him. Right? He's a liar. Whenever appearing in front of others, whatever he is going to say, they are not ready to accept those things because people have idea of those as a liar. Then when he starts to tell something, oh, oh, yes, we know. Ready to say directly. So this is not something to, uh, to live in the society. This environment not supporting us. But if there are people who have confidence of you, if there are people who believe you, they are always with you. They are always supporting you. You can make friends easily because they respect you. So the fourth precept regarding that confidence. Confidence is the greatest kinship that we can develop. If mother and father doesn't have confidence, there is no relationship. Parents and children, if they don't have confidence, there is no relationship. Brothers and sisters, if they don't have confidence, there is no relationship. So therefore, dear friends, around the world, all the relationships are completely dependent on the confidence. Confidence. So, we observe these precepts to develop that confidence, to be a happy person, to reduce our stress, to reduce our worries, to have a worryless life. So that is the reason. And the fifth one, not to use drugs, alcohol, or any kind of things, any kind of uh, intoxicants. For what? We are already living with defilements. These defilements are always creating so many clouds in our mind. We don't want to get uh, boost anymore from drugs and alcohol. We are already living with these unclear, unhappy thoughts. We are blind with these defilements. So we don't want to increase our blind blindness using drugs or alcohol. To maintain clear mind, to maintain happy thoughts, not fake happy thoughts, real happy thoughts, 
based on reality. So we have to have clear mind, clean mind. So therefore we have observed precepts for that. We develop our determination, promising ourselves. Next one, not to eat in inappropriate time. Generally, practitioners who are paying attention to develop their spirituality, who are paying attention to develop their mind, they have to they have to cut off their unnecessary wasted time when they start to practice this particular precepts, not to eat in unappropriate time. That's all Buddha said. With the advice to his followers to observe these precepts. So, when we have a meal in the morning, then we are ready to think about the, what is going to happen in, in lunch. When we are when we are finishing our lunch, we are ready to think about what what would be there for dinner. But when someone observes these precepts, okay. I'm uh, uh, abstaining from eating in an inappropriate time. So you don't know to worry about, you don't know to think about the, what you're going to eat in next time. You don't know to worry about that. So you your schedules would be very simple and easy. You are not wasting your time to manage your time to manage uh, desires, this one is very supportive. Not only that, so intermediate past in these huge things in this world. The Buddha is the person who introduced this method. When you finish your lunch, you can stay until next day morning to eat some. That is intermediate past. There are people who are saying that uh, I'm the person who is introduced this method, something like that. No. Historically, we have all these things. These precepts are written in books 2,000 years ago. The Buddha was here 2,600 years ago. But all these things we, they wrote on books 2,000 years ago. So therefore, there is no challenge or any arguments to accept it. Intermediate fasting. So it is very helpful for your health. So during this time, you can take care of your diabetes, cholesterol, pressure, and all these things. That is extra benefits that you can gain through this retreat. So that is one. Another thing is paying attention to music, movies. These things not allowing us to stop in our life when we started to watch movie, when we started to play music. Limits are not there. That's the nature. So therefore, in here, we ready to make our mind making limits ourselves not to indulge with all these music, movies and things. For what? We are paying attention to develop our spirituality. Spir spiritual agencies are there, so I don't want to pay attention for these uh, things. My attention, my ambitions to use this opportunity to develop my insight. So these are the basic precepts that you're going to observe. Benefits for yourself. Is there nothing to take us as benefits of your seeing? There is nothing. So all the benefits are there with you. So how much energy you have, how, how much effort you have, you can see your results and your, your benefits yourself. I don't know what is happening there. At the end, you can develop happiness, peace, calmness yourself. You are the 
person who can see all these is asked not me. So today, when you are reaching to Bhavana, what kind of mentality you have? What kind of mentality you have? Before you come to this retreat, what was the situation in your dwelling place or working place? Sometimes perhaps uh, others might be recognize you as a person who is angry mindedness. Sometimes others might recognize you as a stressful person. Sometimes they might recognize you as a bad person, bad behavior person. Sometimes they might uh, recognize you as a person who just talking, no any results with actions. So there might be so many recognitions, uh, results with your behavior. Seeing all these things through yourself, when you are determined to reduce these things, so during this time period, exactly observing these precepts and practicing meditation and participating in all other discussions, and then you can see your mind. How is my anger? How is my other unwholesome thoughts? How is my behavior? You can see it yourself. To see that results, no one need. You can see it yourself. So these are the benefits of the precepts observances. So let us observe these precepts and then you can continue until end, end of this retreat. So then at the end of this retreat, you can see the results. If you feel okay, these are very good supportive for your practice, your spiritual development, then you can continue. Otherwise, try to get more information regarding all these precepts and develop your knowledge and make arguments and analyzing things yourself. Then see if there is any logic, anything that you can apply. Okay. So uh, let's discuss the other things, meditation regarding your practice and things later. Then we can start our observances. Page number one will be good. A small one would be page number twelve. You are here in Theravada Center. According to the Buddhist uh, traditions, you can see there are three traditions in Buddhist religion: Mahayana, Theravada, and Vajrayana. So we belongs to Theravada class. We can say Buddhist Orthodox class. The language in here you can see Pal. Page number 10. You can see the language Pal. One of all this language. Pal is the language that Buddha used to deliver his service. Hero are the tradition, always follow that tradition. We always like to read suttas in Pali. We always like to connect with that original language of the Buddha. Therefore, traditionally, we have this method, we use Pali. All these observances we do using Pali. Sentences. So you don't have to worry about that. You can see the meaning there in English translations. But for now, respecting the tradition, let's go through this Pali sentences and stanzas. So we can start page number 10 at the beginning part. In here, you can see there's a part for ladies, there's a part for monk. Again, ladies, monks, and all these two people, the way how we do it, you can start with uh, the first part. O Kasa Aham Bhante. Try to read it. Okay. 
Before we start our practice, let us do this chanting. Every day you can join with us this chanting before we start our last person here. We do this every uh, Sunday of the sutta for this course on loving kindness. We used to do uh, we used to do chanting this sutta particularly before we start our lunch. So before we start this meditation, retreats also let us. Uh, do chanting together, we can use English translations. Okay, you all can join with me to chant. One skill in good, we seem to attain that the state of peace should affect us. One should be able, straight, upright, obedient, gentle, and humble. One should be content, in support, with beauty, peace, living life, controlling senses, discreet, not including unattached to kindness. One should not do any side for which the words from my children. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have to be nice. Whatever you do is done without exception, we correspond to large, medium, short, shuttle of the rest. We develop all the people living in a whole part. Both of countries are may all be inside to me. Let no one be seen at the not spite, neither from anger nor the Indian, should anyone be harmed. As a mother with a small life to protect her own child, even so to its own three days, one should cultivate a normal sight. One should cultivate for all women. The heart of boundless loving friends. Above, we know I am not the right. I am not shopping without the end of this sentence. Whether standing, walking, or sitting, lying down, or being elevated, one should develop his mindfulness. This is called divine wisdom. Not calling the internal excuse, but virtuous and endowed condition, removing desire for sins and matters. One comes and again is not in the world. By the power of this truth, may I always have a deed. By the power of this truth, may I always have a deed. By the power of this truth, may I always have a deed. Thank you. So, let us practice. Um, in the evening, when we sit for meditation, there is no limits. How long you wish it to meditate, you can take. Up to 9 p.m., you can meditate here in this hall. This hall is open. Even after 9, no one comes to go to the yoga. Generally, we ask him to go to bed to be, uh, after 9. But anyway, uh, 
it's completely up to you how long you want to practice English. In the morning, we are coming here at 5 30, but if someone is ready to come before, that's fine. No matter. Generally, sometimes some people should be here around 3 30. If you don't sleep there in the kuti or a dormitory, sometimes you here to meditate. It doesn't matter, you can meditate. Very important thing is, this is a group meditation. We are meditating together. So therefore, even you are moving very, I mean, you are concerning very much. You are moving without, uh, it not feel very well to yourself, but it make noise. So therefore, when you are sitting on cushion, when you are leaving from the place for any reason, so be careful, be mindful not to disturb anyone. Completely not allow any cell phone or any electronic gadget in the meditation room. Don't bring your cell phone. You don't want to worry about time. We have clocks on both sides. You can see the time. And particularly in the morning, you don't have to worry about we ready to ring the bell. Uh, in the evening, if you are concerned about time, yes, in the year we can use. Don't bring your cell phone. Give a break for your cell phone. Okay? Give a break for your cell phone. It is very necessary things. Otherwise, keeping your uh, cell phone even in uh, silent mode, it's make noise. Don't disturb others. Don't disturb others means we all are here to practice. So then discipline is very important. Therefore, please don't bring your cell phone. As well as in the lunch room, dining hall, or sangha hall, anywhere, even in your dormitory, if you have to make a new particular phone call. Don't disturb others. Don't disturb others. Because keep in your mind all the time, we are in a retreat. We are in a retreat. We are not here to just spend your time. You are not here in your in your vacation home. Okay? This is not your vacation home. This is not your Motel or hotel, this is a meditation center. Who are coming with that idea of source? We have to respect them. Therefore, using your cell phone or any electronic gadget, don't disturb others. When you are coming to meditation, you know, try to come on time as much as you can. You can. Just in case if there is some delay, then be calm, be, be mindful. Come to meditation hall very quietly and sit on your cushions very quietly and don't disturb to even the one who are next to you. Okay, so this is a silent retreat. You have to observe silence. No talking, no chatting, nothing. Because this is a wonderful opportunity that we can use to think about ourselves. What is happening with us? What is happening in my mind? How I can change my mind? How I can develop my mind? Pay attention for that, not other extra outside things. So, observing silence, you can get very good support for that. So therefore, even though you are coming late to meditation hall, come quietly and sit very quietly don't disturb anyone else. Keep in your mind, this is not like other place. Other place means this is not like a place where you gather in this. Even if it's not like a, like a library. This is a very quiet place. People are meditating. So even very simple noise would be big noise for others who are practicing meditation. Through their concentration, it might be disturbed there. Therefore, don't do any disturbed purpose. Sometimes there might be something. Yes. So it is it is kind of uh, 
and things can 100% will not be able to practice it, but be mindful all the time. And keep in your mind, people are meditating. This message is very important, keep it in your mind. People are meditating. Keep that message in your mind all the time. It will help you to be calm and quiet yourself. It will help you. Be calm and quiet yourself. So, uh, whenever you have free time, you can come to meditation. During the retreat, the library is not open to read. So, pay attention to Dharma discussions and meditation. Uh, it is not to read, it is not to maintain any other discussions. Okay? Keep these things in your mind and let us use your opportunity to develop your insight. Okay, then let us start to practice meditation. Um, another rule, whoever leaving as the last person from the meditation hall, that person is supposed to turn off lights. Both switches are there. Uh, whenever you're leaving as the last person, you're supposed to turn off that switch. When you come into meditation hall in the morning, you're not supposed to turn on that. You're not supposed to turn on any switch. You just come and sit. This place is not dark, kind of dark, but not blind dark. It's, you can see the place, you can go there without disturbing anyone. We have some lights and we use 24 7 even to worry about that. So let us practice. To practice our meditation, body posture is important. There are different traditions introduce different kind of body postures. Connecting with the original teachings of the Buddha, the Buddha said, Parimukhaṁ sati mutvata peritva. Having a lotus posture or have no lotus posture, keep your body upright, its head should be straightforward. These guidance are there given by the Buddha. So then we are here in the place where we call meditation center. In this center, we thoroughly pay attention to apply the teachings of the Buddhas and Buddha's guidance as much as we can. So therefore, keep your palms together right up or left. In some other traditions, they have different kind of things, but the Buddha's guidance, keep your palms together right up or left. And in here in, on your lap, and keep your body upright, and it should be straightforward. During the meditation time, you are not supposed to move here and there. It should be in one uh, direction. So keeping that way, your body, you can get good support from your body posture to develop your uh, mindfulness and concentration. So this is one thing. And if you have any kind of body feel, body pain, you feel okay. That's that's enough. My time is out now. My uh, I am not able to bear anymore this body pain. Change your posture. It doesn't matter. Change your posture. And as well as you feel okay, I'm sitting in long time. I don't. I'm not familiar to these traditions. I want to stand. Yes, you can stand it. And you can practice. Very important thing is try to continue your mindfulness. Each and every moment, even though when you are changing your posture, be mindful. Do it mindfully. Do it mindfully. And someone feel, okay, I sat, now I stand it, but still I need to change this my to change my posture. So then you can start to work in meditation, even here inside. It doesn't matter. So, you can practice meditation sitting, standing, and walking, but not in sleeping. Okay? Not in sleeping. In here, you're not supposed to sleep. Sit on cushion. If you are not happy with that, you can change posture. You can stand it up. 
and if you will is not helping you, you can walk slowly and as a meditator, you have to be aware of each and every movement of your body parts. This is the way how you should practice walking meditation. Tomorrow we have walking meditation sessions. You can learn some other things. If there is any, uh, any questions, any clarification that you need at the Q&A session, we can discuss all these things. Okay. So then let's start. Someone can turn off the lights. Lower, yes. Okay. Are in comfortable seats? Lotus posture, or half lotus posture, or you will. Keep your body upright and head should be straight forward. Take a deep and long breath and let it go slowly. Be relaxed. Again, take a deep and long breath. And let it go slowly. Be relaxed. Your mind is relaxing as well as your body. Determine yourself. This is my meditation time. This is not the time to pay attention for past experiences or future plans. Give this message to your unconsciousness. Keep that message there thoroughly. Develop your energy and effort to continue your meditation practice. You feel your body is here on this cushion. It's very comfortable and relaxed. You don't have any thoughts in your mind. Only energy and effort in your mind to meditate. Let us start with loving friendliness meditation. Pay full attention to your body as you can relax. You feel your head. You feel your head. You feel your forehead. You feel your face. You feel your shoulder. You feel your chest. You feel your belly. You feel your hips. You feel your legs. You feel your toes. All these body parts are relaxing. It is very comfortable. I don't see anything. I don't take any objects through my eyes. I don't hear nothing. Only you can hear my sound. While paying attention, try to analyze what you can hear. Voices of missionaries. 
Pay attention to all of the sounds, what we can hear from far away, who more and more far away objects. You can hear very far away sounds. Determine yourself to cut the length of far. The things that you can hear very short now. The limit is getting shorter and shorter. I don't hear anything beyond this meditation. Determine. I don't hear anything. Only you can hear my voice. I don't hear nothing. My mind is getting calm. My body is getting calm. Determine yourself. This is my meditation time to practice mindfulness. You feel your whole body is relaxing. Only thing that you can notice inhalation and exhalation, your breath. Pay full attention to your body and in head to toes generate loving friendliness or loving compassion towards to, 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 to yourself. May I be well, happy and peaceful. May I be well, happy and peaceful. May I be well, happy and Not just depending on the words, try to get that feelings to your mind. May I be well means that wellness is developing in your mind, not just physical body. Wellness is increasing in your mind, not in your body, not regarding any materials. Happiness is increasing in your mind, not regarding any other achievements or any material gains. Happiness is increasing because no worries, no troubles, anything in your mind, any conflicts in mind, in your mind. You are not living in past or future. You are living in this moment. And your happiness is there in this moment. May I be well, happy and peaceful. Developing metaphors to yourself 
Let us bear these comforters with others as I am. My family members, friends, relatives, and neighbors be well. Happy and peaceful. As I am, my family members, friends, relatives, and neighbors be well. Happy and peaceful. Metta not developing itself. Metta always developing along with compassion, karuna, sympathetic joy, as well as equanimity. These are we call Satara Brahma Vihara, O Brahma Vihara. Oh, my family members, friends, relatives, and neighbors, be well. Happy and peaceful. Let us exhale. All living beings in this world, may they be well. Happy and peaceful. All living beings in this meditation hall, may they be well. Happy and peaceful. All living beings in the state, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this state, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this country may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this country may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this continent, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this continent, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings on earth, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings on earth, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this galaxy, may they be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings in this galaxy, may they be well, happy and peaceful. At the end, you can break all the boundaries and limits. Making boundaries and limits, just practice metta to the universe. Seen, unseen, living near or far, born or coming to birth. Weak or strong, long, large, shadow or gross, visible or visible, living near or far. Born or coming to birth, human, non-human, all living beings. 
Be very happy and peaceful. Pay attention to the universe. No boundaries, no, no limits, just metta to the universe. All living beings be well, happy and peaceful. All living beings be well, happy and peaceful. Take your time and practice as much as you wish you can.